Hi everyone, I'm Juliette Davis and this is a tutorial on letting, tracking, and kerning in Adobe software. I'm using Adobe Illustrator, but these steps work in Photoshop, InDesign, and other programs as well. Illustrator is our best friend right now because in the next video, we're going to turn some of this type into artistic logo design. So let's get started. First, if you're not familiar with the terms letting, tracking, and kerning, you can check out the link to my video in the description below or follow along with us. First, open Adobe Illustrator and create a letter-sized document. We're going to start with letting, which is the space between lines of type. It's sort of like double spacing or single spacing, except it's a lot more flexible. Select your type tool. Click on the artboard and drag to create a text box. You'll see some placeholder text is automatically created to give you a visual. Now let's highlight this text and go to Windows, Type, and Character. This will bring up your character palette. See the letting icon with the arrow up and down next to it? Click the up arrow to increase space between your lines of type, or you can enter a point size in the field and hit enter or return. Okay, now see the icon below that on your palette? That is the tracking button. It's going to add space between the letters instead of the lines. So let's click and hold the up arrow on the tracking. See the letters moving apart in our text box and the down arrow brings them close together. But that's a pretty slow way to do it. There's a quicker way professionals handle type and it's really going to help you soon. All you need to know is two buttons. And here they are. The option key on your left if you're on a Mac or the alt key if it's a PC and the arrow keys on your right. So I want you to take a look at your keyboard now to locate these because we're going to hold the Option key down with one hand and move the arrows with the other hand. All right, back to our artboard. With your text highlighted, hold down that Option key with one hand and start tapping arrows with the other. The up and down arrows will control your letting, in other words, that line spacing. So you can very quickly adjust it. The right and left arrows control your tracking. In other words, the letter spacing, the spaces between those letters. So go ahead and do that and you can see them change. These buttons are gonna be particularly important for kerning as well. Speaking of that, what is kerning? I can give you a definition, but it's probably easier to show you. Kerning is the space between specific letter pairs. So let's see what that means and how to do it. Select the type tool first, then click on the artboard, but this time don't drag out a text box. Just click and type the word trains in upper and lower case. Okay, now we're going to enlarge that word by hand, and we can do this by hand because it's not in a text block. It has its own bounding box, and we can manipulate it, it's great. Click on the selection tool, hold down your shift key, and drag the word larger. This is so much easier than changing point sizes and trying to get it where you want it. Um, just drag it the way you want it. If you don't hold down the shift key, the word will stretch and distort, which is not a good look. If you want taller or wider text, then you can get a new font for that, but don't stretch your type. Okay, first we're going to give this word some tight tracking. Tighten the spaces between the letters. We've already learned to do this, so go ahead and highlight your type. Hold down the Option or Alt key with one hand, and with the other hand, click the left arrow key to pull that type in tightly. Nice. 
Okay, now we have tight tracking, but there's a bit of a problem. Take a look at this word for a second. Do you see that some letters appear to have bigger space between them than others? Just take a look. What about those first two letters? It looks as though there's a bigger space after the T, right? But that's just an optical illusion. Some letter forms, like this T, just have a lot of space around them. For example, under this T, under the right arm, there's a lot of space. So it appears that this is between the letters and it's really not. So we're gonna need to tuck that R, that next letter, underneath the T to make it look right. To do this, click your cursor between those two letters, the T and the R. And just like before, hold down the Option or Alt key with one hand. With your other hand, tap the left arrow key. See the space close? Or tap the right arrow key and the space will widen. But let's make this tight, since tight kerning looks most professional. Now that is nice, but let's take a look again. If we take a look closely at the rest of the word, uh, we'll see all the spaces are a little off. And that's because big type shows all those weird little spaces more visibly. So any type that is about 19 points or larger needs to be hand kerned like this. So let's kern all the spaces to make them appear tight and even. To do that, you'll first need to advance your cursor to the next letter pair. So right now, take your hands off the keyboard entirely, and with your right hand, just tap the right arrow key once. Boom, you're there. You're in between the next letters. Now let's kern. We know how to do that. Hold down the Option or Alt key, and click your left arrow. Nice. Okay, and again, we're going to advance the cursor by taking our hands off the keyboard and tapping the right arrow key once, and kern again. Option or Alt key plus the left arrow. And again, and again, and you'll get really fast at this because designers do a lot of kerning. So now let's think for a moment. Take a moment. Notice that it didn't really help to do that tracking first that we did. So why did I have you do it? Well, it's because people tend to have trouble understanding the difference between tracking and kerning unless they experience it themselves. The tracking created uniform spaces between all the letters, but the kerning fixed the weird spaces between all those letters and we needed our human vision for that. The computer couldn't do that. So all large type needs to be hand kerned, usually between every pair of letters. Okay, so that is kind of the bummer news, but the good news is you get super fast at this. Um, check this out. I'm gonna write a headline and I'm just gonna kern it quickly. Boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick, boom. <laughs> I kind of go through it quickly. Um, designers do a lot of kerning because there's a lot of big type out there. So there are headlines, logos, social media images, ads, even your name at the top of a resume. And prof professional designers can see unkerned type a mile away. So you want your type to look professional. We're always going to kern it. Okay, great job, great work. Practice these steps to add professional type to your designs and check out the next video on how to edit your type characters as artwork so you can make cool logos and word art. Have fun and make magic.